this video, I'm going to show you some of the creative ways that you can use the multi row card visual in Power BI. We're going to look at some of the benefits of using multi row cards against individual card visuals in Power BI, as well as the many limitations that it has, which is probably the reason why you don't see a lot of people using this visual for the reports, all of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the multi-row card is a visual that allows you to see your data and its details in sort of a grouped format. It sort of works like a summary similar to a table, but groups details of the data like cards. So let me show you. So here's the Power BI reports that I prepared for today. It is a subset of the Northwind dataset, which is a company that sells goods internationally. We're not going to go too deep into the details of these tables and data sets. The key thing to understand is that we have some data about the different products that they sold, as well as how much the total sales were for each of these products. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the category of all these products in a table like this. And then I'm going to bring in a measure which calculates the total sales across all of these different categories. Now, if we change this uh, at the moment is a table uh, visual by default. But if we change this and select multi row cards, you will see what the key difference is from a table to a multi row card. So you see that for every single category in our table, you will have the total sales grouped against that, uh, uh, that category. So you would have at the moment total sales with beverages, condiments, total sales. And you can add more details to this information. Like, uh, let's say if we wanted to add the total quantity as well, you will get the quantity along with the category. So sort of grouped like a card essentially. Now, if you increase the width, that also adjusts automatically across, you know, your other visuals. So either at the bottom or to the right. And by default, because it's a multi row card visual, it shows data as rows as opposed to columns. So at the moment, it's showing us the categories vertically as opposed to horizontally. Now, the horizontal way of reviewing data is not uncommon and it's typically a kind of a design decision to have a summary of let's say all of your total sales as a top liner on the top of your pages but in this case in the multi row card visual that's not possible at least natively anyway so uh, if i remove the quantity for example so this would give you a good summary of all your totals but if you want to have a horizontal view of all your total sales. You can do that, albeit it's a little bit tedious. I want to just show you a quick preview of how you would do this with multi-row visual and why you'd want to do it like this if you want to utilize multi-row card visual. So I'm going to create a new measure here. And I'm going to type, uh, let's say, condiments for now. And then I'm going to write calculate here. And then the expression is total sales. We'll add a comma here saying if the category name is equals to condiments and then close that and to make our life simple, I'm just going to copy that and hit enter. So now we have a singular measure that just simply gives us the total for condiments as a category. So one, one, three, six, nine, four. We'll do the same thing and we'll try to create one for beverages as well. So new measure. I'm going to paste the code that we've just written. I'm going to change it to beverages. And then I'll change the filter context to count beverages. So the idea is to create multiple measures for all the top totals that you want to show in the multi row card visual. So if I drag it there, for example, you have the total for beverages similar to this. So now what we can do is if I delete these two visuals, add a new multi row card visual, I'll put it up there like this, and then we'll drag in all the measures that we've created so far. So beverages and condiments. 
So what it's done is it's created essentially a new column for each of the fields that we have into this visual, essentially creating a horizontal view of all your totals across the categories, as opposed to a list that we have here on the left-hand side. So the idea is you create more measures to show all of your different totals, but we won't do that today, but you get the idea. Because this is only one visual within your page in your reports. This is the multi-row card's biggest advantage. First of all, if you want to optimize your page's performance, general best practice indicates that you should reduce the number of visuals that you have in each page so that Power BI has less visuals that it has to render every time your users open your page. For example, if you need to show total sales for each category in a page, if you use a normal card, you will need to create eight different visuals for each of these categories, which needs to be loaded one by one by Power BI. Whereas with a multi-row card, it only has to load one visual, which will have significantly faster load time. Another good benefit is that because it's just one visual, things like organizing or reorganizing your cards is pretty easy because as you change value, it applies to all the cards. Whereas if you had eight different individual cards, let's say if you had to change the color of one card, you'd need to change it across all the other cards. Now onto its problems, which is basically that the conditional formatting doesn't work on this visual. Now you might be fooled into thinking that it's possible because the FX icon is on the properties like the accent bars or the labels. So you have this FX icon available to you, but this doesn't work. And I really tried my best and it never allows me to change the colors dynamically through there. So in terms of customization, it's super lacking, which is a real shame. There is one workaround though, which is the best that I could find, which is to use emoji values as parts of the measures within your values. So let's say, for example, we want to show some colors on our total sales in our list here. And we want to show if a category is below 150,000 pounds in terms of sales, it should show some sort of red. Otherwise it should show as green. Now, as I mentioned, even if you use the conditional formatting icon here, you cannot change the accent colors or the um, title colors or even the value colors dynamically based on the individual values for each of the, uh, the, the cards. But what you can do is adjust the total sales and add the colors that you wanted here via emoji. So let's go back to our total sales measure here and let's uh, make a couple of adjustments here. So I'm gonna wrap this value with a variable like this and hit, uh, gonna write return here. And then we're gonna add an if statement here. So let's say if the sales is uh, greater or equals to 150,000, this needs to be green, otherwise, it's red. So if we wanted to show this, I'm, I'm going to add a space just to show you what this, what this looks like. And then I'm going to add the sales variable at the end. So what you will see is now these summaries will now have the name green or red next to the total sales here. So red because it's below 150 green because it's above 150. So now instead of using texts, we're going to replace this with an emoji. So you'll hit windows dots, which will open up the emoji board here. And we'll just, I'm just going to use one as an example. So green like this, and then on the red, we'll replace that one as well. Windows dots, and then we'll search for something red like this. So as you can see, and if we just remove some category labels there, you can now easily see which categories are reaching the targets that we have using the multi-row cards and having some dynamic colors in there. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the multi-row cards visual in Power BI and some of the workarounds that you can use in order to show some rag colors or values within this type of visual. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. 
Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'm to do better for our next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.